I really should be choosing games with easier names, damn. Alright, hello everybody and welcome to Chess Diagnostic. This is Andrew and we're going to look at a game played in 1967 between Bobby Fischer and Lam Surin Myagmar Surin. So this is a position that resulted from the game and it's white to move if you want to try to solve it. Let's see how we got here. Bobby Fischer started with e4, e6, d3, and then d5. After knight to d2, knight to f6, and bishop to, or sorry, g3, we're going to get bishop to g2 and a king's Indian attack. In this game, Bobby Fischer really puts the attack in the king's Indian, and Myagmar Surin follows the strategy of simply ignoring his opponent's kingside attack, a very dangerous strategy, and expanding on the queen side. c5, bishop to g2, knight to c6, and then with knight to g, or knight to f3, we're going to get kingside castling after developing all his kingside pieces. We get castles, castles, and then with e5, and the knight back, basically Bobby Fischer's staking a claim in the center and creating a semi-closed center so that he can further expand on the king's side and start an attack. After rook to e1 protecting the pawn, we get b5. Now, Myagmar Surin is expanding on the queen side, as I said, um, but the problem is, you can see that his king side is very vacant. So Bobby Fischer plays knight to f1, and then h4, obviously planning to either bring the knight in, we had g4, and then expanding with eventually h5. So Bobby Fischer has developed all his pieces, and now he's ready after of course, a3 uh, preventing a further expansion. We get a trade, and now after the trade, uh, black is pretty much locked off from the queen side, even though he follows that strategy. He, he can take this uh, open b file, but it's just too slow. So we see just a lot of wasteful moves, knight to a5. Now, the computer does recommend that this in this game that black is not really making any blunders. But the problem is, is that he doesn't pay any attention to white's attack. Knight to e3, and then bishop to h3, preparing further expansion. And Bobby Fischer just follows his very simple but logical plan of expanding on the king side. The knight has to go back, and then with knight to g5, Knight to d5, obviously threatening something like knight to c3. Uh, but notice, even if black's pieces are active on the queen side, they don't really accomplish anything. There's nothing to attack, uh, there's no strong threats, and white's king is very safe. Bishop back, bishop takes, uh, further reducing pieces that control black's king side. Queen moves, and now queen to h5. Again, Bobby Fischer is following his very simple and logical strategy of expanding on the king's side. Again, with rook to c8, further reducing all the pieces on the king's side. So Bobby Fischer is activating his least active piece, and now we see the threat start to materialize. Um, if the pawn takes, then we get e takes f6, and pretty much black would be lost at this point after it looks like bishop to f5 takes rook to e7, queen to d8, rook, to, rook, to, rook takes f7, and all these moves are just very scary variation. The queen has to give itself up, and well, black's just lost. So we don't see that variation. We see the queen move back uh, to allow itself to play queen to f8 if necessary. Knight activates. A further weakening move, now the dark squares are completely owned by Bobby Fischer. Um, he doesn't want to just play here yet, because the queen would just protect itself. And then we get something like uh, h6. Instead, Bobby Fischer allows his queen uh, to support eventual h5. Knight takes, and now the rook's active. So if we look at this position, Bobby Fischer has two very active bishops, an active rook, and a queen against a king and a queen with weakened dark squares. Black really has nothing to do. Further expanding on the queen side, it doesn't accomplish anything. These two rooks, the bishop and the knight, 
are essentially worthless. H5, calmly and patiently undermining the king's side. And now with rook to h4, simply ignoring the pawn trade. Rook to a7 accomplishes nothing. And now with bishop to g2, there's tons of threats. Pawn takes. Again, black has nothing to do. Queen to h6. And now he's threatening. Queen takes. And then a discovery. Let's see here. All right, this is the initial position. The queen moved to f8. And there's a lot of moves by Bobby Fischer. What do you think he should do? Obviously, the most forcing move is queen takes h7. And after queen takes h7, black resigned. Obviously, the king takes. We get a discovery. If he goes back, it's checkmate. And if he takes with this king, we get the beautiful bishop to e4, checkmate. An amazing game by Bobby Fischer, who really put the attack in the King's Indian. And it's amazing his opponent just simply ignored this attack. Maybe he respected Bobby Fischer too much, I don't know. Anyway, what do you think of this game, and what do you think of this board here? I'm trying to experiment with some boards. Um, some people didn't like the 3D board, so I'm going back to the 2D, and I'll see you in the future. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future videos. See you in the future.